Fusion Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Foreign Trade Foreign Trade, also called International Trade, is the exchange of goods and services between two or more countries. The principle underlying this is specialization. There are two major types of foreign trade and they include the bilateral trade and the multilateral trade. The bilateral trade is the agreement in which two countries exchange goods and services, while the multilateral trade is a type of trade in which a country trades with many other countries. Reasons for foreign trade Countries engage in international trade for the for various reasons, which includes uneven distribution of natural resources. Because natural resources are unevenly distributed, some countries are naturally blessed, while others have little or no natural resources. This necessitates international trade. We also have differences in climatic condition. We know that the climatic condition of the earth varies from one region to another. This variation gives rise to growth of different crops, therefore prompting the need for exchange. We also have differences in technology. Because the level of technology differs from one nation of the world to another, some countries with advanced technology can produce some industrial products at reduced cost and sell to the less developed countries. Another reason for foreign trade is the differences in skills. Inhabitants of a region may develop special skills in the production of a commodity such that it acquires special reputation for its skills. This necessitates foreign trade. Because, you know, because this particular region is known to be skilled in the production of this particular product, countries will want to patronize that product. Foreign trade also prompts expansion of markets for products. It came into foreign trade came into existence because of the need to widen the market for goods produced by the country. Another reason for foreign trade is the differences in taste. Your taste, what you like, might not be what I like. So this prompted, in order to balance that taste, this prompted foreign trade. This prompted the international trade. Then we also have the desire to improve the standard of living. In order to improve the standard of living, countries engage in international trade in order to boost the standard of living. We also have differences in the efficient use of natural resources. Foreign trade may arise because of differences in efficiency in the use of natural resources. If I find out that you process these particular resources or you process these particular resources more than my country does, I will patronize you and this will in turn boost and promote foreign trade. There are three types of foreign trade. We have, as you can see in the diagram, we have the import, we have the export, and we have the entraport. The import, the export, the entraport. Import trade is the act of buying goods and services from other countries. It is sometimes restricted to control a country's balance of payment deficits. The goods are imported either in response to direct order or on consignment, and it is divided into visible and invisible trade. Visible 
import consists of goods that can be seen and touched, that is, tangible goods which come from other countries. Nigeria's visible imports, for example, include automobiles, machineries, rice, and the rest. While invisible exports consist of services that cannot be seen or touched, rendered by countries. And examples of invisible imports include aviation, tourism, banking, and the rest. And this will appear in the balance of payments. We also have the Entraport trade. The entraport is a form of foreign trade in which goods are shipped to one port and subsequently re exported and shipped to another port. For example, I import a good and I export it back to another country. If custom duties had been paid on important goods and are later re exported, the duty can be claimed back. Therefore, entraport is the re-exporting of goods imported from other nations. Then, the export trade. The export trade is the act of selling goods and services to other countries. Some governments frequently attempt to encourage exporters by introducing export subsidy. Exports can equally be divided into visible and invisible exports. As we know, the visible exports, which are goods that can be seen and touched, consist of goods which are sold in overseas markets to other countries. In Nigeria, visible exports are cotton, palm oil, crude oil, textiles, cocoa, and a variety of them, while invisible exports consist of services rendered to other countries. Such services include banking, as you mentioned earlier, insurance, transport, and consultancy services. Barriers or problems with international trade. Barriers by barriers, we mean those problems that limit or those problems that limit international trade or those problems that are associated with international trade. These problems include distance. We also have the barrier of difference in currency. Fluctuation in exchange rates may work against the volume of transactions as well as non-availability of foreign currency. Like in Nigeria now, we know that our currency has somehow so far depleted until further notice. So it will also affect our international trade. Then we also have the barrier of language, difference in language. Most countries experience translation problems which result in loss of accurate meaning to words and terms. If I can't understand you, buy your goods might. There might be problem, there might be it is a barrier. Also understanding communications among countries becomes more difficult where the language is different. Engagement of interpreters will also involve extra cost. Another barrier is the difference in culture. This difference plays important role in slowing down the pace of international trade. For example, some parts of Nigeria, putting on trousers is, is a taboo for, for females and whether you want to import the trousers, it's the the person importing it, the person buying this thing from another from another country might might be double minded about it because he or she would also be considering the profit or the loss involved. In particular, the choice of symbols, signs and trademarks are limited since the country may not understand them. 
cultural taboos as we've already stated using the trousers as an example in the beach trade we also have the difference in legal system business is not regulated by the law of the importing country but by international law there is need for the knowledge of other countries laws to assist countries businessmen in their trade transactions we also have difference in weights and measures the issue of weights and measures creates a problem of conversion from imperial to metric system and the rest then the issue of political instability this issue of frequently changing government and rampant groups as well as wars, quarrels, disagreements among nations stops trade too. Then also, we also have the barrier of government policy. Foreign trade can be hindered by the political ideologies of different countries countries a country can deliberately decide not to trade with another country because of its political differences for example the united states of america and libya owing to the 1988 locker aircraft bombing they, they've decided not to trade with them because of that aircraft bombing another barrier is the imposition of tariffs, quotas, exchange rates, control. Flexible custom regulations and tariffs limit the extent of foreign trade. Also, documentation, as we've earlier stated, too many documents are required, which involves extra costs and personnel, thereby slowing down transactions among nations. Most exporters and importers when they think of the processes they'll have to go through in documenting and the personnel they will need they, will, they are majorly discouraged because it slows down the transaction among nations the transportation and communication is also a barrier because businessmen from different nations especially african countries find it difficult to contact their partners in other countries because of poor communication and transport facilities. This in turn hinders foreign trade greatly. Balance of trade and balance of payment. Balance of trade refers to the total value of goods sold and bought by a country during a given period, usually a year. It is in summary, the addition of goods sold and those bought by a country during a given period, usually a year. It can also be defined as a statement or record showing the relationship between a country's total payment to other countries and its total receipts from them in a given year. Using me and you now, as a country. Balance of payment can be defined as a statement or record showing the relationship between my total payment to you and my total receipt from you in a given year. The, the total payment I made to you and the total receipt that's also the total payment you made to me in a given year. Yeah. Components of balance of payment. These are those things that make up the balance of payment. And they include the current account, the capital account, the monetary movements account. These are the three accounts that make up the balance of payment. Current account is composed of receipts and payments for visible and invisible services invisible services which include insurance banking transportation tourism and the rest while visible goods include automobiles crude oil cocoa and the rest capital market 
is the account that is made up of the inflow and outflow of capital, both long and short terms. It consists of the capital movement in form of investments, loans, and grants. Monetary movement account is the account that shows how the balance of both current and capital accounts are settled. They are the, it is the account that shows how the balance of both current and capital accounts are settled. Looking at this account, you can clearly see how the balance of both the current and capital accounts are settled. We have the favorable balance of payments and the unfavorable balance of payments. Favorable balance of payment occurs when the receipts from invisible and visible export trade is greater than payments to other countries on, vis on invisible and visible import trade. Using me and you now as an example. Favorable balance of payments for me will occur when the receipts, when my receipts from invisible and visible export trade is greater than the payments I have made to you as a country on invisible and visible import trade. A credit balance can be used to increase investment abroad or to add to a country's gold reserve. Unfavorable balance of payment is used for a debit balance in the balance of payment. It means that the payment on visible and invisible imports is greater than receipts on visible and invisible reports. A favorable balance is just the opposite of favorable balance. Using me an example now, a favorable balance for me is is occurs when a favorable balance for me occurs when the payment I have made to you as a country on visible and invisible imports is greater than my receipts on visible and invisible exports. Unfavorable balance can also be referred to as adverse or deficit balance. For everything there is a cure and a, for for every unfavorable balance, we have a remedy. Remedy for deficit or adverse balance of payment includes imposition of tariffs. We reduce importation of goods by increasing their prices. Devaluation of domestic currency. Establishment and promotion of import substitution industries. Borrowing from financial institutions will also help to remedy the adverse balance of payments. Increase in domestic production of goods, whereby I increase my domestic production of goods that will import, that will export, it would help remedy my deficit balance of payments. Sales of foreign investment and assets, Export promotion by granting tax concession to export-based industries would help to remedy my deficit or a country's deficit balance of payment. Quantitative control like quota system, import license, or outright ban can be used to reduce imports and promote exports. Control of foreign exchange transaction will also help to remedy deficit or adverse balance of payments. Now, tariffs or restriction to trade. Tariffs are those taxes or duties imposed on imports and exports by the government of a country. The idea behind tariffs is to restrict the volume of trade or improve the international terms of trade. Instruments of trade restrictions include import duties or tariffs, foreign exchange control, the embargo, import monopoly, import quota, preferential duties, import license. Import duties or tariffs is a tax imposed on imported goods to reduce the amount of trade. 
by the time you consider the 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 amount you have to pay for the goods you imported it will dis it will discourage you and it will now help to restrict trade foreign exchange control trade can be controlled by reducing the foreign exchange available for trade transactions therefore foreign exchange control is another tool for trade restriction another tool is devaluation by lowering the value of a country's currency in relation to other on the other countries importation becomes costly while export becomes cheaper embargo is another tool to restrict trade this is the prohibition or outright ban placed on some imported goods another tool is the import monopoly this refers to a situation in which the government of a country takes over the importation of certain goods which are only essential to the country then the import quota this quota restricts import by imposing a limit on the quantity of goods that can be imported in a particular country because you know that you can't exceed this quantity it would it would restrict you to make further trade or purchases the preferential duties is also another tool in order to either encourage or discourage the importation of certain goods from certain countries discriminant duties are charged on these goods in order to because i don't want you to import these goods i would increase the charges on a particular good so that you as a person you as a country will not import these goods another tool is the excise duties reduction this method helps to reduce the prices of locally made goods so as to enable people to patronize them instead of foreign made goods in order so we we'll stop buying foreign rice and buy local rice they would reduce the price of our local rice so that we will patronize the local rice instead of the foreign rice so that we'll stop importing rice that is an example another tool employed is the import license this is a this import license is a permit that allows an importer to bring a certain quantity of foreign goods into a country and allows him to purchase the foreign currency required to pay for them. Before we round off foreign trade, let's talk about export promotion, procedures for international trade, terms of trade, reasons for the worsening terms of trade, terminologies in international trade trade export promotion also called export drive may be defined as any policy by which government encourages producers of goods for exports to produce and export more in order to earn more foreign exchange measures taken by government towards export promotion could include or includes reduction of export duties the government promotes exports by reducing the costs, the, the duties that you would have to pay for. There's also the subsidy for export-based industries. The cost of producing commodities by export-based industries can be subsidized. Another measure taken by government is granting tax incentives to export-based industries. Setting up of export promotion agencies is another measure that the government can take towards promoting exports in a country. For example, Export Processing Zone in Calabar is an export promotion agency. The retention of parts of foreign exchange 
earned by exporters is also another measure. Infrastructural development like seaports, airports should be developed so as to facilitate or promote exportation of goods. Reduction of freight rate. Freight rate on exports can be reduced to encourage exporters. Evaluation of local currency to make exports cheaper is another measure to be taken. Organizing international trade fairs periodically in order to attract to in order to attract foreign importers is another good measure to take. Credit facilities can be granted or offered to exporters in order to promote exports. Produce procedures for international trade to take effect. Procedures for international trade. For international trade to take effect, certain procedures must be followed. The step-by-step -step produce procedures includes the importer and exporter will be brought together through different means, for example, letter of inquiry. The next step is for the producer to send quotation to the buyer in response to the letter of inquiry. The quotation will show the description and features of the product. The third step is that after receiving the quotation, the importer will place an order with the manufacturer. The indents will show details of the goods, price, and date of delivery. The next step is to make arrangement for payment through any agreed means of payment. For example, the documentary credit, the telegraphic mail transfer, and other means. The fifth step is, the fifth step is an arrangement for the goods to be shipped through a shipping company will be made. The shipping agent will get all the necessary documents like shipping notes, calling forward notes, etc. The goods will be packed and well arranged in containers. The exporter will then prepare and send copies of bill of lading to the importer in advance. Other documents that will accompany the consignment will be prepared and sent. Then, when the goods arrive, that is the seventh step, the clearing agent will process and complete all necessary documents. The agent will check the manifest to ensure that the goods are on board. The custom will assess the consignment and compute the duties to be paid. The final step is that the goods will be taken to the warehouse after all necessary documentation have been completed. Another topic that we'll look at before we round up is the terms of trade. Terms of trade may be defined as the rate at which a country's exports exchange for its imports. The rate at which a country's exports exchange for its imports. It is expressed as a relationship between the prices a country receives for its exports and the prices it pays for imports. In other words, terms of trade is the price ratio between exports and imports. Terms of trade is usually measured by the mathematical formula. Terms of trade equals index of export price over index of import price times 100 over 1. That is, terms of trade equals index of export price divided by index of import price multiplied by 100%. A country's terms of trade are said to improve when this ratio increases and to worsen when it decreases. The terms of trade are favorable if the average price of export is higher than the average price of import. Exports become relatively more expensive than imports. The index of terms of trade would therefore be more than 100. If the prices of exports rise in relation to the prices of imports, the terms of trade will improve, since a given quantity of exports will pay for more imports. Favorable terms of trade leads to a rise in the real nation income. 
the terms of trade are unfavorable if the average import price is higher than the average export price which results in more expensive imports than exports and this situation worsen terms of trade when terms of trade are unfavorable the index will be less than 100 and this reduces the real national income terms of trade in west africa terms of trade in west african countries have been witnessing an unfavorable or worsening trend because the prices of their imports have been increasing relative to prices of exports and the reasons for the worsening terms of trade includes the fall in the demand for certain primary products of west african countries this is due to the development of substitutes by the developed nation and this leads to a decrease in the price of exports and increase in prices of imports most West African countries are producers and exporters of primary products, for example, agricultural produce and crude materials. They import lots of capital goods in an effort to industrialize, thereby increasing imports more than exports. The production of low quality of manufactured products is also a problem. This is due to low level of technological development. The importation of high quality manufactured products therefore increases importation over exportation. How to improve terms of trade? I can remember telling you that everything that has a problem has a solution. And now, how to improve terms of trade? Terms of trade can be improved by any method which will increase the price of export relative to import this method includes use of inflationary policy appreciation of the currency imposition of higher export duties on commodities with an inelastic demand a reduction in the demand for imports improvement on the quality of manufactured goods true collective bargaining developing countries could achieve higher prices for their imports. There should be increased internal use of primary products in production. Then some terminologies in international trade. They include the free trade, the infant industries, devaluation, depreciation, dumping. Free trade refers to the non-restriction on international trade. Here, buying and selling can take place between different countries without the imposition of artificial barriers such as absence of custom duties, quotas, embargoes. Here, there is a perfect mobility of commodities and factors of production between countries. In fact, industries are newly established industries. They are still in their tutelage and must be protected from foreign competition to safeguard their survival. Devaluation is the lowering of the exchange value of a country's currency. This makes imports to be expensive and export to be more attractive. Depreciation refers to the fall in the value of a country's currency against other currencies as a result of the interplay of the forces of demand and supply. Dumping is the practice of selling goods in foreign countries at lower prices than what are obtainable in the exporting 